Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of I'll Call You Right Back podcast with me, your host. My name is Chad Medved. Welcome to the show. Uh, we got a lot of stuff to cover this week, so I'm going to just jump right into it. Uh, going to be a little bit longer of an intro, but it will be worth it. So um, I am throwing my first official I'll Call You Right Back podcast presents event, uh, and I am pumped about it. So uh, Tuesday, December 21st, 2021 at 7 p.m., I am uh, hosting an event at Yoli's Cucina in Jefferson Hills. Uh, Yoli's Cucina is an Italian restaurant, and uh, it is ran by one of my good friends, Ben Bartleson, and uh, his wife, Beth. And uh, it's just, it's a really delicious place. I've had him on the podcast. Uh, uh, back in March, I believe his episode was like 154, I think it was. But uh, we hear about his story and Yoli's and how that came to be. But uh, I've been wanting to plan an event and uh, I finally figured out what I wanted to do. So this is going to be a $20 uh, two person event uh, or $20 per two people, I guess, however you want to call it. But uh, ticket is going to be uh, 20 bucks and you're going to get a 14 inch eight cut one topping pizza you're going to get two unlimited fountain drinks and you are going to get access to a absolutely banging christmas cookie table by the great home baker franny d's and uh all this great stuff is going to happen while we all watch the 1990 john hughes holiday classic home alone and uh, I am absolutely pumped about this. So whenever I wanted to plan an event, I figured, you know, I want to plan something that I want to do that no one's doing, you know, some type of thing that I would love to do. I love eating. I love watching good movies. Why not do it together? So I figured, what type of place could I do this? You know, in Home Alone 1, Kevin McAllister wants nothing but a plain cheese pizza. So I figured, how dope would it be to be able to, you know, grab your friends, grab your significant others, and go out and grab a delicious pizza and watch, you know, this holiday classic? I mean, Home Alone is probably in the top five greatest Home Alone, I mean, holiday movies of all time. And I'll debate you to the grave. So December 21st, uh, Tuesday night is going to be a, uh, event for the ages. What do you got to do on a Tuesday night? Absolutely nothing. I know you don't have nothing to do. That's exactly why I planned it on a Tuesday night. You know, seven o'clock, we're going to roll up to Yoli's. We're going to sit there. We're going to enjoy a meal together. We're going to break bread together. We're going to laugh. We're going to enjoy this nostalgic, you know, Christmas, uh, movie and uh, you know it's going to be a great time um, on top of you know good food good people and everything like that uh, Ben is going to have an open kitchen so if you would like to look at the Yoli's menu and order something extra you are more than welcome to do that uh, the Yoli's bar will be open so if you want to have a little bit of that that grandpa's old cough medicine you could uh, run up to the bar and uh, purchase whatever you would like uh, ben is cool enough to be able to run a three dollar you call it special all night so uh, if you want to get crazy and you want to call off work on wednesday you know let's do it uh, i'm excited for uh, this event this is going to be my first you know this is the first event that i've ever planned and uh, ben and beth are nice enough to want to allow me to uh, use them as a guinea pig but uh, you know you know, I have faith in everyone that's listening and I know that uh you know what better what better way to ring in the the holiday spirit than uh dinner and a movie the week of Christmas. You know, Antoinette was chirping at me telling me that, uh, you know, the week of Christmas was hectic and a lot of people won't be able to come, but you know, I'm a person, you know, I ain't got shit to do on the 21st and I know you don't either. So tickets are now available. You could hop up in the link in my Instagram bio at I'll call you right back, or you could just be, you know, you, you can go in, uh, www.I'llCallYouRightBack.com and, uh, click on the merch tab and below the merch tab, you will see the event flyer. You could click on that. All the details are there. Uh, hit add to cart and uh, a little dialogue box will pop up and it will ask you how many people are in your party. So we could kind of get some table arrangements going. And it will also ask you if you have a peanut allergy because I am inclusive and I need to know if you will die if you will eat peanuts. So 
fill out those couple questions and hit the imagine hit the invisible add to cart button right below uh, I say that because for some reason the add to cart button will not pop up uh, but it is there so just you got to click a couple times right under the second question but you'll get there um, but I appreciate it I'm excited you know I hope that uh, hope to see you all there you know I've been planning to I've been planning to plan an event for a while and it's finally happening and uh, I'm excited to uh, patronize Yoli's while we all get together and have a good time uh, on top of you know all of this uh, we're going to do some some extras I'm going to be running a 50 50 everyone knows how 50 50 works you know you put in some money I give you some tickets you got a chance to win half of the pot total and uh, the other half of the total pot usually goes to the person running it but I will not be taking a dime of that I am going to put that right back in and uh, donate it all to the wait staff. It's something called the wait staff raffle. Uh, there's a comedian named Burt Kreischer who I've seen do this. And uh, it's honestly something incredible. You know, it's the holiday, su- it's a holiday season. What better thing would it be than to uh, make someone's day? You know what I mean? You know, it's a uh, why not, right? Plus, I'm sure it will uh, drum up some more people to, uh, you know, want to sweeten the 50-50 pot, you know? And uh, besides the 50-50, I also got a super secret gift or super secret prize to be won. Uh, a couple of them, actually, but I'm just excited. Uh, more details will follow. Uh, follow me at I'll Call You Right Back to stay up to date and uh, hop on over and grab yourself a ticket right now because I cannot wait. Uh, But the reason that everyone is here this week, I'm very excited. Uh, Another great episode uh, on top of, you know, this exciting news. But this week I sit down with uh, artist and muralist Cameron Nesbitt, aka Camo Customs. So, uh, Cameron is a, I don't know. I don't know if I should call him Cameron or Camo. I'm going to call him Camo. Uh, Camo has been on my radar for some time now. Uh, I usually try to think like how I came across people, um, and how I kind of had my, you know, how I came across them and how I, how I, you know, got introduced to them. And it has to be because, uh, he used to be, you know, he used to be, I mean, he was kind of the front runner of all this customizing sneakers and everything in Pittsburgh back in the day. You know, I remember seeing so many people posting his work. You know, people will buy sneakers and they will uh, hire people to customize them. And uh, Camo definitely is uh, super nice with it. But uh, it was just kind of cool because, you know, I knew him in that world, but like, you know, in the few years since then, he kind of has, you know, just leveled up his craft. Uh, He has kind of put down the sneakers and the apparel that he used to customize. And now he has been working on murals. You know, he's been doing like these crazy big murals with uh, spray paint cans. And uh, I wanted to just have him on the podcast and kind of hear, you know, about his journey because, you know, like how does someone who customizes sneakers, you know, how does that translate? into painting these huge murals on walls and uh, I'm sure you've seen you know a lot of his work Um, he is responsible for the black flowers mural that is along the riverfront trail and uh, all the organization with all the artists that uh, helped and participated in that and uh, you know besides that I mean he's done countless other work in local businesses and studios around the city and uh, you know just a cool dude you know I was happy to have him on I thought we had a great conversation and uh i know that you will enjoy it as much as i did so without further ado episode 187 of i'll call you right back podcast with uh cameron camo nesbitt i gotta use the telephone hello I'll call you right back, podcast. Uh, brought me that, and he's like a big jazz head. And he was like, this is my favorite shit ever. If you listen to it, you know, you really want to like try to like, he was like, it's complicated at first, but you'll figure it out. That's why I just texted him. I was like, I feel dumb listening to this kind of, but 
I'll figure it out. No, I'm going to say it'll be all good. Once I get through it. But, uh, yeah, man, I'm pumped to talk to you about this. I appreciate you coming out. Oh, no problem. I appreciate you having me, boss. I've been uh, seeing uh, a lot of the shit that you've been doing. Oh, yeah, for sure. But uh, I assume you've been on a podcast before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think whenever I was googling you, uh, I saw you had some very local. Were you on that? Mm-hmm. And uh, I saw a bunch of stuff you've been doing. So you've been, I mean, you've been buzzing in the city for a good while now. Yeah, I want to say um, I've been doing a uh, different, well, at least public work for about three, four years now. I'm in the city. Now, where are you? Where are you? Where are you originally coming up from? Um, I'm from Homewood. I'm from Homewood, the east side of Pittsburgh. Because uh, I I usually try to figure out where I started to hear about people. Okay, mm-hmm. and uh, I I I don't remember how I started following you. I don't remember where I started seeing your stuff. But I feel like it's been a minute. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I don't know. You probably popped up at someone's. I mean, you, I know you did a lot of murals in different shops and everything around here. Yeah, I mean, um, you also um, you big into the sneakers and stuff. So um, I, I'm just like getting started. into it. I'm just getting into it. <laughs> So, I know um, you're big into it. Yeah, yeah. That's like my, um, you know, my second love now, but, you know, always into the sneakers and the fashion for sure. Oh, yeah. So you did, you did, I think that was where it was from, mm-hmm. some some uh, sneaker custom customizing. Yep. Man, when did that start? Um, that started a little bit after, um, after I left college around 2013. So I did that for about like three, four years, all the way to like maybe 2016, then made the transition. It was dope. I traveled the country, you know, did some sneaker cons and stuff. But, um, you know, once I started traveling and seeing different things, I started seeing murals and I just really wanted to get into it and, um, you know, see how to get into that craft. Yeah. I mean, were you doing, uh, so, I mean, I'll, I'm going to rewind it back to the beginning. So like coming up, obviously, like when, when was like the initiation to art? Um, I just, you know, I was always kind of handsy, you know, like I didn't really have, uh, initial like, um, art background, yeah. or, you know, um, focus. Uh, a lot of my friends did it. Like we drew Dragon Ball Z, you know, Pokemon and stuff like that. But, yeah. Um, How old are you? I'm 29. Okay. Yeah. So I didn't really, um, I didn't really, um, hone in on that, that talent, you know, too much. Um, I cut hair for about, uh, through college for about six years. You know oh, yeah. I mean? So, um, that helped with the hands and stuff. But, um, I want to say once I started, you know, cutting hair and just, you know, being more free after, um, after I stopped, you know, playing collegiate basketball, um, I had a little bit more time to just think about it and just, um, you know, express myself in a different way. So yeah. that's kind of like where the shoes came from and like, you know, everything came from, um, you know, I just kind of like fell on my head. That was my injury. I, I um, had a severe concussion, got elbowed in the face and fell on my head. Playing hoops. Was, um, yep. It was crazy. Oh, my goodness. You um, played for a while, like all through, I mean, growing up. Yeah, that's like kind of what I wanted to do. And then, you know, one day. You know, that happened, and then I just really wasn't able to, you know, pass concussion screenings. How old were you? Uh, 18. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I was 18. Can you imagine how crazy it is? I mean, like, I played football my entire life, and uh, it's crazy because, like, I played, I'm 30, or I'm 31, actually, and it's like, I feel like we came up in a time where it's like, <clears throat> rub some dirt in it. You know, mm-hmm. don't be a bitch about it. Right, and it's right, like, right. I'm like, bro, my, my head is like pounding right now. And they're like, just go out there and hit someone, you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, man, how much, how much chaos did I do inside my head? So you got elbow pretty good. Yeah, yeah. It was um between the elbow and then the fall to the ground. You know what I mean? That's what really, you know, shook me up. Yeah. And, um, you know, just my reaction time is a little bit different, but it, um, you know, it kind of expanded my creative you know, um, reach. Yeah. If that makes any sense. For sure. Did you have an idea? So, I mean, like you wanted to play basketball, like in high school, I usually ask people like, you know, what did you want to, did you have an idea? what did you want to be? Yeah. I definitely this right wanted now. to hoop. You yeah. Know, I wanted to hoop. Um, I think if that didn't work out, I think I wanted to get into like physical therapy at the mm. time. So, um, it's that's interesting. Like my focus. It's interesting to hear everyone's like lives as far as like what they it could be. I mean, like, I feel like everyone that I talk to, uh, usually what they're doing now is not necessarily what they plan to do their entire life. They right. kind of just like got into it. So mm-hmm. it's always interesting to hear how people uh, vision themselves back when they were younger. Like, what did you want to do? Like, I ha- I feel like I, I wanted to be like an engineer or some shit. I'm kind of <laughs> that now, but it's like, it's, I don't know. It's I feel like it's weird because you're forced to like make these decisions and you don't even know what's going on. Right, right. There's so many steps that, um you know, no one talks about, about, you know, a specific field or For practice. Sure. And you're just like, yeah, it's an idea. Crazy you know I mean? stuff. <laughs> so it's where'd wild. you, where'd you go to college at? I'm on with the Mercyhurst University. 
What, what were you like studying there? Um, I studied, I was in liberal arts for a while and then um, I kind of leaned into business and communications. Mm-hmm. So um, when I actually got hurt, I like opted out and got an associate's degree in business and communications. So it kind of, um, it kind of helped and, you know, kickstarted my, I guess my art, my artistic career. Cause yeah. I was able to um, look at it in a, um, you know, a monetary marketing, yeah, profitable you know, way, lucrative. You know, yep. So it was like the perfect time, you know, when, um, I want to say it was like 2013. It was like really yeah, bubbling. like like right whenever it's like in the peak of like you know like the refresh cons around here and like mm-hmm. people like painting everything. Yep. I remember it was crazy. It's crazy time for yeah, sure. It was it was like one of the biggest things. You know, um, what was it for like that five year span? Like it yeah. was huge. You know, and then um, the resale game and like everything and um, you know that that changed everything. You know what I mean? As far as um social media and accessibility to the game you know so um it's weird to think about like how because like i'm not a big sneaker head but i like i'm getting into it recently like i've, mm-hmm. I've kind of had a sickness a little bit recently <laughs> and uh i've been i've been like really falling in love with it but it's like i just don't know it, it's weird because there's a disconnect because the majority of the sneaker heads i feel are people that want the originals and like the retros and shit and they don't want to like have any paint or anything like that or any customization Mm -hmm. on it but then there's like a whole different world of like all this customization that's like you know i don't know like where do you fall in line with that are you someone that likes to you know add a little bit of your own flavor to your stuff or do you want to keep it like the og shit um i kind of want to say i'll probably fall into a little bit of both you know just because um you know how how much i've done you know in the sneaker and fashion realm um, I really like my OGs and, um, you know, I really like uh, colorful, you know, almost one of a kind. You know, you're not going to see anybody yeah, like, else wear. I feel like you OGs. have some loud outfits on. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I was looking through sure. your Instagram and I saw you had the ceramics on and mm-hmm. like you're matching all with all that. And I, I mean, like you always you could tell you always are wearing different colors and shit like that. So you mm-hmm. can tell that you're into it all. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that's um, it's kind of, I kind of like everything, you know, like I, um, sometimes I'll shop other artists, um, you know, customs. A lot of people are releasing, uh, like their own, uh, silhouettes of, you know, Jordan dunks and stuff like that. If I, you know, find a pair, I like, you know, I'll grab those. It's, um, it's actually just a beautiful time to be a sneaker hit just because, For um, sure. you know, the accessibility is, is ridiculous. It's you know? crazy. You can get anything you want, anything you want. And it's just like Instagram and it's like, you, you don't even know what you want and you just see it and you're like, holy shit, that's crazy. Yeah, you're like, I want that. You yeah. know, like it's, um, it's pretty wild to think about that because like sneakers were never anything that was like, you know, I grew up skateboarding kind of sneakers were like, you know, it was cool. You were able to like, you know, in the skateboard world, you were able to like have, some sort of like sneakers and shit like that where you were able to like uh elevate your sense of style but it's Mm -hmm. like i don't know now it's it's like back then i only had like one or two pair but now it's like i just want a bunch of different pairs to like match with different shit and Mm -hmm. just like not just destroy at one time so i've been collecting like I've been collecting too much. I've been a little bit lucky on the sneakers <laughs> app, so it's like it's a blessing and a curse. I can't I can't win on the sneaker apps for anything. Last thing I won, I did win the um the off white lots. I, I got won, that too. I won the twelves, but that was the last thing I uh, I got the sixes randomly. Yeah. But, but but whenever I clicked on it, the only ones that were left were size thirteen. So I was like, mm-hmm. I'll grab these, maybe I'll, you know, flip them for something. And then uh it kind of just like the ball started rolling from there. I ended up getting the electro oranges and like the Bordeaux and then they, st- and I'll usually just like, you know, I, I get the, the resale shit has like a, uh, some people like look at it negatively, mm-hmm. but it's like, fuck. I mean, if I could just get a pair of shoes like them, them off white dunks, what were they like? One sixty retail. Mm-hmm. I think I sold them for like four fifty. Yeah. Easily. 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 And you're just like, why not do that? If you can, you know, enter the raffle and do it. I but, mean, it's uh, a market. You it's know? a market. Like, I think, I think that it's a uh, appropriate, you know, like I look at it from both ends, you know, I see where the negativity can come from, but for also sure. I see the positivity and the accessibility. I can, you know, buy, a pair of shoes that I would probably have to fly to LA or, you know, fly to New York to go get, or, you know, pay maybe $500 over yeah, and I can go on stock X or gold and, you know, maybe pay 200 bucks over, but like I have that shoe, you know, For sure. stock my size. So, well, are you, are you someone that like buys off of eBay? Um, I really don't bang with the eBay. I, I try to stick with like stock X or I like, you know what I mean? I, I like Zeds a lot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Obviously um, so, them dudes. Shout out yeah, to Zeds. They, yeah. Shout out to Zeds. They always had a fire. So always like, shop I try local. To, um, yeah. I try to stay super local as possible. And then um, if not, like uh, 
go to different swag shops like out of this out of the city i was like i was on the like i usually am the same way you know i looked at all the places around here but i was looking for the dusty olives and i bought them like as a you know early christmas present mm, you nice, know? Nice. yeah so like i bought these and like i bought them off of ebay but I saw that they had like the authentic, like the authenticator and shit like that. And, you know, I feel like that, uh, you hear all the, like the horror stories about like all the fakes and shit like that that mm-hmm. are coming out. So I, I asked like a few people like, uh, Steve from Zeds, yep. you know, I was like, what, what do you think about like, uh, what do you think about like the authenticator? Like you think it's legit and everything like that. And, uh, supposedly it's great. Like uh, a lot of the people that I talked to, I, you know who battle monkey is? Um, heard of, heard of, I mean, he's like, uh, he's someone that's friends with like everyone around like Geiger and all them and mm-hmm. he uh he's I've never met someone that had more sneakers than him in my life he has a room that's like bigger than like just to where my couch is from here and it's to the ceilings of just, just all sneakers every sneaker literally every sneaker you could think of oh man and he's just like a uh I did an episode with him at his house and he's just like uh his house is like a museum of just like dope ass shit cause you oh, know that's sweet all kinds of cool shit but uh yeah man sneakers is definitely something that's new to me that uh, I've really been falling in love with and but like you were saying full circle the accessibility of it all mm-hmm. you know on Instagram as an artist you know you couldn't be in a better time in the world oh yeah it's the like literally the best time to be a you know a artist period you know for anyone when are, when are, when did this like transition to being like a full-time gig for you um let's see i always you know kind of took the leap of faith and just like um you know rolled with the punches and kept it going so i want to say like it was completely full-time probably around 2015 when I was just about to make the transition from sneakers to um walls and shit. Yeah, yeah, murals. And um the sneaker demand was just too high. You know yeah. what I mean? It got it was just as high as like, you know, Instagram. You're getting um inquiries from all over the country. You know what I mean? Like and and shipping's crazy. And it takes so long. It's like it gets ridiculous. So um that just kind of wasn't the game that I wanted to play due to how accessible it was, you know. But yeah, um, oversaturation, everything. Yeah, Blessing it, and it a curse. got crazy, you know. And um there's so many guys that figured out how to push out so many different customs and um I started slowly getting better and like they started taking me longer, you know. So um yeah. that just you know, it was a good thing, but it um ended up shooting me in the foot um in a game that's like, you know, speed kill. So I had to kind of switch it up and um Try to do something that was bigger. You know, I'm six six. So I'm like, why not? Let's try. I know you're wars. tall like, as fuck. <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, when do you when, so like if you're trying to like make this transition into everything? I mean, if you're working all on sneakers, you know, were you ever doing shit on on like canvases or anything? Like, did mm-hmm. you have? I mean, you were messing around with that? Yeah, yeah. I did a um a small tra- transition in the canvas, and um, you know, I sold some paintings, and like that was very fr- fruitful. Got to do some commissions, just learning what people may like. Yeah, but um, even with that, like uh, that ultimately goes into like art shows, and you know that type of um, that type of realm of um, art marketing, and like art shows, right? As of now, just really isn't my thing. Yeah, I'm uh, more community based, and just uh, you know, kind of just trying to make staple pieces in places that it can like you know impact. beautify, yeah, or impact the area. So yeah, it um. It just was a bigger task that I I wanted to, you know, accomplish. So I chose murals over the canvas work. That makes sense. I mean, when you first started this out, was this like, because I feel like anyone that looks at one of your pieces could tell because you have a certain style. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like for you to, like, how long would you say it took you to kind of like develop your style and like kind of come into your own? Because you're doing like these huge murals Mm -hmm. that are like, you know, super, super complex. So obviously there was a learning curve, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. It's like, what was that process like in the beginning? Was it difficult for you? Um, I mean, I, I still think I'm in it, you know, I still think it's, um, every day, you know, I'm, I'm learning new things and, um, you know, taking so many things in and making sure that I can, you know, um, comprehend and regurgitate them into my work. And, um, you know, it was rough, you know, it's a, a very interesting transition because, um, I also picked up a new medium in spray paint. So yeah. I've only been spray painting for, um, three years now, yeah. but I've been muraling for about close to five. Oh, uh, so, so before that you were using brushes, just mm-hmm. brushes. Yeah. It sucked. I ended up like having Popeye <laughs> forearms. It, it sucked. 
suck. It fucking suck. Yeah, that would be the worst. I mean, the only benefit is you're tall, so like you have long arms, you get that. But the cans, right. I don't know. Over the over the last years of me being friends with like Matt at Streets and everything like that, mm-hmm. and all them dudes, that's and, a homie. I know, and like Shout out to Matt. I he spoke there. very highly of you. Yeah, and, man. Uh, I usually run all my guests through him and just just see what they think. But he said you're very good people. But uh, you know, learning from what these guys like uh like all the people that hang around them and like how difficult all that is and like the respect that it goes into it and like you learn about uh you know like the can control and stuff like that and you're just mm-hmm. like this is insane that people could put these like vivid pictures on the wall i think my favorite piece by you is your nipsey hustle uh oh, yeah yeah the beard and everything it's like super crazy to see that and it's like i i just want to watch like a time lapse of it all but mm-hmm. uh for you to like develop all that i mean I'm curious, like in the beginning, how long does something like that take compared to obviously you shortened down the time frame now because mm-hmm. you're you're sharpening your sword, but in the beginning, was it like super overwhelming? Oh uh, no, it it actually was um it was some freaking nature shit, man. Like <laughs> in the beginning, like I was like doing doing wild projects in like a couple hours, you know what I mean? For five the wolves. hours. Yeah, you know, so yeah, I was just thrown to the wolves, belly of the beast, and I was just always in, put in a position where um you know, I always say I was put in a position where I kind of had no choice. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it was like, you know, do or die. You know, this is what you want. Like, you either take it or leave it, you yeah. know? So um, through that, I ended up, um, you know, within this process of, you know, four and a half, almost five years, I'm on 200 murals. 200? Yeah, I'm on 200. What's the, I mean, the, what's uh, the biggest one you, that you did so far? Because, um, I mean, I've seen, I, I saw some crazy shit. Yeah, easily Black Flowers is the, the biggest one. That's the one I'm um, across from PNC Park. How uh, how long was it? Like, do you, you have any idea? How, like, how much um, paint did you use for that? Oh, shit. It was um, probably like 400 cans, maybe close to five. And how long did that take? Uh, I've, I'm still actively doing touch-ups on it, but yeah. it took about two months, um, probably like, what was it? 225 gallons of house paint. And Jesus. yeah, it's, it was, um, it was rough. I had a couple assistants. I had, um, three assistants, you know, they, um, held it down and, um, yeah, that was probably the biggest project we all, you know, seen you know like it was definitely uh something yeah. that everyone's seen that in the city mm-hmm. and uh, i think that that's uh speaks on to like whenever you were saying you wanted to make like impactful pieces that you know spoke on it now uh i'm sure that you know anyone that's listening to this seen the you know the the black lives matter like how how big how tall was it um i think it's about 20 feet 20 20 to 22 feet roughly give yeah. or take the frame and um because unless you walk down there unless you're walking on that path down there it's like you, you can't even really like conceptualize how big that is Mm -hmm. it's huge it's really like a a crazy piece to see that Mm -hmm. so how did that all come into play as far as like because i think it's so interesting how you know obviously uh painting on public property in the past was like i mean it's still looked at it negatively but now it's like you know they're almost like embracing it. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the world today is almost like embracing it. Every like new restaurant you're seeing is getting like, you know, these like what people once thought of as a nuisance. So, you know, people are fucking with graffiti on a different level now Mm -hmm. and like, you know, sorts of, and, and different aspects of it all. It's interesting because, you know, I know people had problems with all that shit and everything that went on. It's like, if you looked at any comments, I mean, anything like that, people were just out of pocket for mm-hmm. sure. How does that whole process come along as far as you being allowed to do that and the shit that you had to go through? Because I know it got vandalized like numerous times. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was interesting, you know what I mean? Even how the whole thing had came about, um, you know, it, it was already like during, uh, you know, uh, what was that 2019 during the protest, yeah. and, you know, everything was going on. And, um, you know, there were these murals going up that say Black Lives Matter, you know, um, you know, different shout outs and memorials to, you know, fallen fallen angels of, you know, black bodies to police uh, brutality. And um, as these murals are going up, you know, they're they're catching heat. You know what I mean? And it's like um, I'm actually getting calls. And they're like, are you doing it? I'm like, no, nah, I mean, I'm not doing them. So, you know, I find out who's doing them. And, you know, I just. uh you know, I kind of like put it to like a collab and just like, you know, forced the reform and just had black artists come down, you know, pay, you know, 20 plus black artists to be evolved, you know, put a piece on there. And that kind of like perpetuated just, um, 
like, you know, the ongoing notions that's going on now. So um, we then revamped it into, you know, another rendition of the Black Lives Matter. And um, once doing that, um, I had a, was it, I believe it was an eight person team, um, you know, got them paid, helped with um, the production, you know, got them some mural experience. So that was, um, you know, the second rendition of it. And then coming into this year, we did the third one, which is Black Flowers. And um, I just wanted to do a little something different due to the vandalism that, you know, happened in between time. Because um, those were the reasons why we ended up changing it so many times due to the vandalism. You know, I just felt that the city needed something um, more intentional, you yeah. know, and um, something that would stick a little better. And, you know, there's some things that you see that are just um, deemed beautiful without visual, you know, perception. Yeah. So um, I, that's kind of like where I was going with it, just so, you know, that kind of was like a low blow to, you know, vandalize it. So, I mean, the process was nuts, you know what I mean? Um, altercations with homeless dudes. Um, really? Yeah. The homeless, the homeless are, are shysty and feisty down there. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> guess uh, I guess while I was riding my bike, I did see a few posted up down there. Yeah, like, you know, there, it's, it's, you know it's always just a, um, a tug and pull, you know? It's just like, all right, like, you know, how can we both exist in this space without, yeah. you know... Coexisting and yeah, not and be anyone. civil with each other. Yeah, and it, it, it's just always not, like, the best... Um, the best uh, conversation all the time. But, um, you know, it's, it's worked out. Not too many problems down there. Um, I've been working with River Life. That's my collaborator to, like, you know, fund it, um, make sure I have everything. Like, they've been doing great. Um, Stefan Bondrager from River Life, you know, shout out to him. He's a, you know, bulldog when it comes to getting stuff done. Yeah. Um, so that's just, you know, how that project went and, like, how it, like, kind of grew into the Black Flowers. And um, I think during the process, I feel like, the um, first Black Lives Matter rendition was a, um, you know, a seed, you know, being planted. And I feel like the second one was uh, being watered. And I feel like the third one is just the flowers that are, you Growing. know, sprouting through. So I like that. That's I like kinda, the way you think um, about that. You know, yeah, that's kind of like the process I wanted to go about it when I named the Black Flowers. And now I have um, a little bit more control of the say-so, what's going on. So hopefully maybe five, ten years down the line, I can run the residency that they built around me for another black artist. And, you know, we could just keep that fruitfully going down the line and, you know, just... um Cultivating creative people in the city. Yeah, you know, and just giving people a chance. Like, I think a lot of times the city um, tries to break a lot of opportunities up or make you do group stuff. And um, I think a lot of artists in the city have shown and showcased that they, you know, they deserve, you know, that big break or, you know, that big, um, that big project. For sure. So, um, you know, I'm just... <clears throat> expanding that um that culture of you know you can pay you know an artist x amount of money give them x amount of space and like chill out and understand like there's going to be a great project yeah just know? let them go with it yeah like, you know you see that stuff in in new york la you know those that's why they happen so it, fruitfully at every level of of working you know corporate shit it's just mm -hmm. like people don't want to be micromanaged people want you know just have faith in it we're doing this for a reason I mean, right. you're, you're obviously doing it for something a little bit more than just so, you know, being able to put some money in your pocket. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. I think artists still want to be deemed as professionals. Yeah. You know, like I think that's, um, it's almost condescending. For. Yeah. It's, it's condescending know? for them to like put, you know, a leash on what you envision in your mind. And it's like, right. you know, if you're putting boundaries around it, you're, you're putting it in a cage already before it's even up. Exactly. Now I'm curious to know is a, is an artist that puts their, you know, love and heart and soul into pieces like this. Whenever you see these things get vandalized, you know, how quickly did that happen? And like, what, you know, what, what were your feelings on it? Um, it got vandalized. I want to say the second, the second edition of the Black Lives Matter got vandalized maybe a couple nights after. Yeah. As soon as the um, press hit it. And, um, you know, when I seen it at first, like, I just, I, I thought it was kind of like, um, you know, I thought it was kind of funny, you know, like I, I didn't. I didn't really get as upset as others did just because um, I kind of seen it coming. You know, if it never hit the news, I don't think it ever would have been a thing to vandalize. And, you know, um, sometimes, you know, like people use the media to, you know, enhance actions that they may do. So at the time I knew paint covers paint and, you know, we could figure something out and like get it, you know, fixed up. And um, I did realize when that did happen, um, we need to build a stronger plan. You know what I mean? Like get more of the city involved, get, uh, you know, some of the authorities involved just to 
make them understand how serious this project is so that doesn't happen again. Yeah. So um, you know, I think I think when it happened it was less of hurting of my feelings and more of like um a really big learning lesson. So um that's just kind of how I took it. Yeah. That makes sense. It's also I mean like I mean I feel like that's also part of a uh part of a goal from an artist is is to 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 make things that make people feel a certain way Mm -hmm. whether it's positive or negative right you know what i mean and it's uh it's it's interesting to see that but i know that you know as someone that works i mean as hard as you do at what you do i mean i was curious of what you were thinking about it but that's interesting i mean like your outlook on it is more of like a you know glass half full an opportunity to be able to you know uh pivot on this like negative negativity and just mm-hmm. kind of expand it on more positive things. Mm-hmm. And it seems like that's what you did like pretty quickly, but you know, all in the, all in the time you're doing all these big projects like this, you're also like, you know, I see you're buzzing around all over the map, you know, doing these murals and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm curious, how do you, I mean, we, we talked about saturation of everything, you know, there's saturation of clothing brands, podcasts, painters, everything. How do you build a network as an artist in this world, especially as someone who comes into it so late? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Sneakers is definitely a niche, uh, a niche road and not everyone's following, you know, like I'm not really a customized sneakers person. So mm-hmm. not everyone's looking out for following them pages, Right, right. but for you to like kind of make this leap in a world where there's already a bunch of people that are already super sick at it. How do you build your network? Um, you know, it's a, it's a definitely a process, you know, I think the first, you know, first before anything, you got to believe in yourself more than, you know, anybody on the planet. Yeah. And, um, you know, I feel like a lot of people say that, but like, it's something that you really got to cultivate in yourself because, um, you know, even to this day, like, um, so many people believe in me and I still know I believe in myself more than anybody on the planet, you know? So I think that's, you know, first and foremost, most important. And then, um, you know, uh, I think the second really important thing is uh, spread your wings. You know, you got to move around, um, be a student. You know, like I when I was going to the Art Basels and, you know, L.A. and New York, you know, I, I had like pennies on a dollar. But like, you know, I'm going to these places and um, I'm learning and I'm seeing different things and meeting, you know, bigger name artists and just seeing what it's like to be, you know, um, this person I think I want to be, you yeah. know, and um, I think it was a great thing to see those things because I got to actually cultivate, you know, being myself. Yeah, and finding and, um, out who you are. Yeah, you know, and that was really cool to see, you know, those things. And that's how, I, you know, I see, I have so many muralist friends that are like some of the top muralists, you know, and they, I met them in Miami at Art Basel, you know, and, and they're walking around and, you know, sharing game, giving tips and stuff like that. That's and, dope. Um, you know, so it's... It's definitely um, very good to be studious and um, learn everything you can. Like um, everything that I have with the can and, you know, you can see how um, exponential my growth is. Like I'm just like, you know, I I like to learn. For sure. It's cool to see that. And it's cool to see, you know, like uh, I always believe that it's like super important to leave the old work on like an Instagram page. Mm -hmm. You know, I hate whenever people just delete all the old shit and just put the new, you know, hot shit on there. Right. Because it's like, I want to see the old stuff and I want to see how it is. Like if you look at my Instagram right now, it's busted in the beginning, Mm -hmm. you know, disorganized shit like that. And uh, I don't know, it's just, it speaks to, you know, figuring shit out on your own and like wanting Mm -hmm. to do it how you are. But, you know, for you, to uh get these like to start pulling jobs and mural jobs in like other places are people just like sourcing you out on instagram yeah I, my my demand is just like ridiculous right now you know like i um i saw it says it's customs are closed yeah <laughs> I, saw I, I get like i mean right now like football cleats oh my goodness i will be asked to do football cleats for the rest of my life i know it's crazy <laughs> how like I, it's wild to see all these people doing them yeah i mean it, when i had did it like you know when i had got into it in pittsburgh you know i was the only one doing all of this shit. Yeah. So like when it had happened, um, you know, everybody's coming to me and it just built my name and my demand. So, cause like, you know, now the city and, you know, most people are just like, well, I mean, shit, he can do anything, yeah. you know? So with that being said, um, I was just able to work with so many people and, um, not get lost in like a niche or, you yeah. know, my style or, you know, anything like that. I just was working and, um, I was more concerned on, um, you know, completing the task and um you know doing my task well like and that's I think that's where my competitiveness 
of basketball I went to, you know, with myself and my work. Like, how mm, good that's can a good you, point. you know, make this work? Like, like I want this to look like this. You know, if I'm looking at your logo, you know, you're, you're, I'll call you right back. And I'm like, damn, I want it to look perfect just like that. You yeah. know, I, I work it until... You know, I figure out you put in the work it, for it. You know, so it's it's about patience. It's about trust. Like I said, believing in yourself. But, I feel like um, people could definitely like uh, see that and you know tell whenever that exudes out of people. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's just like, uh, and that's why like I talk to so many different people on here. It's like I don't, I really don't care what anyone does. It's just like I'm if I'm curious of someone and like how they're moving and everything like that. I just want to hear because it's so fascinating to hear everyone's story and like I I'm just I stay like fluid with everything. I like moving in different like uh different like groups of people and like learning different things. Like mm-hmm. if it's you know I'm about to try to get some chickens out here, you know. It, I, I, but but like I'm also trying to learn you know like other wild shit like that. Right. I like to be hands on. I got you some hot sauce here. I don't know if you like hot sauce. Oh, I love hot but, sauce. But uh, it's like I, I don't know. It's it's like in my later years, it's so interesting to me. That's why I always ask people what they wanted to be in high school and shit. Because in high school, I felt like I felt like everything I did was just like a surface decision. You know, mm-hmm. like I always just I always just floated with a current. You know, I didn't really right. like I was friends with everyone. You know, I played football. Everything was cool. It was cool. But it's just like I never really cared about things that I cared about. I was just like it was more just like taking influences my friends. Uh, but like now. I find myself being so much more curious about everything, Mm -hmm. whether it's like, you know, painting, whether it's, you know, beekeeping, you know, wild shit like that. Mm -hmm. Are you always someone that's like kind of, cause you were talking about how like you always wanted to be a student, everything like that. Mm -hmm. Like it's important. I mean, it's an important thing whenever people could like kind of set their egos aside and like learn shit from people. And mm-hmm. all, and I've always been someone who like, you know, I, I will always sit down and try to like be a sponge and learn shit from people. Hell yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, that's like definitely my thing. Cause you know, when you, when you allow yourself to do that, you take away those like social ceilings and um pots and, 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 you know, forms that they, you know, that the, that society has built for us. But you know, when you're, when you're growing, you're learning, you get to cultivate yourself and like, you know, I, I always like to refer back to nature and plants and, you know, process. And, you know, like that's how plants become bigger than they're supposed to. You know, there's no selling there. There's no restriction. So as you're learning, you know, as you're 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 grounding yourself to to who you are, you know, you're able to branch out and, you know, reach and touch and cross pollinate and, and spread. And, yeah. You know, and all you know, all of the, that good stuff. Like, that's a good analogy. Like, you know, so it's 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 kind of like that's you know. I, I just think um, you know everybody has different beliefs, but like you know, I just think as a human, you know, God, the universe. I think that's just our job. You know, to expand and grow and be as big as we can. You yeah, know what together. I mean? we're only here. Yeah, we're only here for so long. You think about it. Um, people are so caged in those. You know, in a ceiling. That's why we can't touch each other. Yeah. That's why the reach is so far back. You know what I mean? So if you break that ceiling and continue to grow, you could reach other reaches. You know, you could reach other plants, other flowers, other people that are ready to pollinate. And um, that's kind of like how my career went about and um, why my demand so high. You know, I have great um, seedlings and flowers and and Surround you know, yourself with around, people you, you want to surround yourself mm-hmm. with. So, yeah. It's, Like-minded it people. Works. So, it, you know, it's alive, it's healthy, and, you know, it, it, it flourishes. Do you ever have time to, uh, you know, sometimes people have, sometimes people's hobbies and passions like this, you know, turn into work, Mm -hmm. you know, like this is obviously something that you're doing is work as well as a passion, but it's like, do you ever get to do stuff, you know? I guess your mural is like you choose, you pick and choose what you want, but it's like, I was going to say, do you ever get to like do stuff for yourself? Like, do you have pieces of your own stuff that you're hanging up in your crib and shit? Oh you know, yeah, like for if, sure. For like sure. if you just want to like custom, like do some shit real quick, you still set it aside some time and, and do yeah, yourself. I'll throw, I'll throw it in. You know, I still do um, small things for family, small jackets, shoes, stuff like that. Um, you know, just try to keep it fresh, still keep the, um, the talent in. And um, you know, you always got to keep, you always got to stay ready, you know? So I'll still do some things for me or like some personal stuff. But like, as of now, like I'm just, I'm so in love with um, engaging with my client and engaging with my community and making, um, making the project so much for them, like that moment, you know what I mean? 
like that's what I take. You know, it's it's not even just a mirror. I take that moment of um, you know, completion and um satisfaction satisfaction and you know, just happiness. So um, you know, that's like really what you know, drives me to keep doing it. That makes sense. Where does uh like where do you like what kind of stuff are you taking influences of? Like where do you get your creativity? Who do you look up to as far as like do you have any people that you look up to? Um, definitely. Uh art wise. Art wise, um, definitely B Mike. Um Brandon Ad- um Adamus. He's on uh, from North no no no, he's from um, Louisiana. He's killing it right now. He has a lot of murals and um a lot of murals and movies, you know what I mean? He's uh, super influential because, like, he has Louisiana on Smash. You yeah. Know, New, or- New Orleans on Smash. So um, it's really cool to see somebody take their community and, like, you know, do the opposite of, you know, what most do and, like, try to spread and go somewhere else. But, you know, bring the spread to your community. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm very inspired by that. Um, Matt Stees, uh, you know, I just like his color contrast, like, he makes purple people. He's actually um, colorblind, so uh, that's really? why he he cut, he paints in certain colors, and I think that's really cool. Yeah, that's and wild. Then, um, it just made me look at you know things a different way. Um, another one, Urban Rubin. Uh, he's out of Fort Lauderdale. He snaps like he just. I think um, being influenced by him just allowed me to understand um, not giving a fuck with your art and like yeah. just giving it to him. You know, I'm like, just whatever it them, is. Yeah. Just giving them great work. You know, like if it, you know, it might be something random, but like it's painted so well that like, it looks amazing. That's what I'm saying. You know That's I mean? exactly how I feel about the shit that I have. It's mm-hmm. like random shit like that. You know, I just fuck with like, you know, just, it, it, it looks great in here though. You know, like if I walk like in the arts fest or something like that, you don't even know what it is. If it catches your eye, it catches your eye. Exactly. I think that it's like, you know, the, the thought of social media and like how, uh, everything is just like, at our fingertips now is like, you know, I know that it's basically the downfall of the world, but it's like also, it's also so great because like, you know, these are like having this Instagram is like a book of like seeds to like plant these flowers. It's like, you're seeing all this shit that these people are doing and getting like inspiration from it. And, uh, I, my only analogy to it is like, you know, skateboarding back in the day. It's like, I'm, I'm sure that like, you know, back in the day, people weren't doing like the wild shit that they are now, Mm -hmm. but you look at people like Nigel Houston and shit like that, you know, he, is like completely reinventing the the game. Well, I mean, he already did pretty much re reinvent it all, but it's like it progressed over the year. And it's like, you look at all these young kids that have this like phone strapped to their hand. Yep. Everything is like, they're getting these seeds in their head. So like you got these young kids that are doing wilder shit and wilder mm-hmm. shit and starting early. And uh, it's pretty crazy to think about like how, like how much it's changed in the last 10 years mm-hmm. and what it's going to be like 10 years from now. I, I love the the one up factor of the inspiration you know provided you know yeah. it just a lot things to get greater even when you think it, it doesn't get greater and I think um I think that's what helps drive me like you know I'm on I'm not on social media all day but when I see it I just see something great you know or I see you know they have that new feature now where all the things that the hashtag stuff you follow and stuff it just pops up yeah even if you don't follow them and I just see some of the greatest things from around the world so um I think that. I think if you can cultivate that um, that energy and um, that focus into, you know, doing that one up thing, I think I think it's it's great competition because you know you're competing kind of with yourself and with the idea of it Hell instead yeah. of you know with an individual someone or and the growth is you know limitless. So I, I I love that like factor. I also like the factor of it being saturated because mm-hmm. it kind of keeps you on like the, 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 the hot plate as far as like, you know, like if you're not going to do it good, someone else is definitely going to yeah, do it. Somebody's good. definitely going to do it very great. So it keeps you accountable for what it is because yep. I could be doing some, you know, ratchet ass shit with this and like, you know, make it sound real shitty, but mm-hmm. you know, other people are going to take that extra time and try to put it in. That's why like, I try to, you know, I try to do, I mean, everyone runs into problems and shit, but I mean, what else could you do? I'm curious to know, like, I mean, I know that you say your demand's crazy. You're working a bunch. You're always doing work. It's like, what do you do for fun? It's like, do you um, have, do you have any things that you do for fun? Uh, so for fun, I do a little bit of things. Um, I smoke a lot of weed. I, <laughs> that's like definitely a hobby of mine. Um, but, um, other than that, I do like to go to the gun range. I think that's fun. Yeah. It's like 
stupid energy. I love doing a bunch of um, random ass shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm definitely the guy that, like, if I see um, some sort of ad for, uh, you know, um, it could be some wild, any type of event or, you know what I mean? Just something I haven't done. Drive-ins, like, you know what I mean? you na- Like, anything that's yeah. just, like, something I don't Different. do. Or I haven't done in years. I yeah. just go do it. So um, I'm a very... Um, Spontaneous yeah, person. Yeah, I used to say it was off the back foot, but it's actually, like, completely energy, like, you know, bound. And, yeah, it's just super spontaneous and... um. I just like not knowing what's next because I know so much what's yeah. next in my career, you know. So um, I just really like flowing. Like um, I think the beautiful thing about, you know, being off of work or, or not painting is I get to just be. And um, it's cool because, you know, I mean, when I'm around the people that, you know, I love or the people, you know, that I want to be around, like I'm just Cam, you know. And I just think that's like something I can cultivate forever, you know, just – um being myself outside of such a big artistic realm is like um, such a blessing and a hobby to me. You know, like I don't, For sure. I don't let it like, um, you know, build an ego or anything like that. Like I think it's truly a blessing to be able to just step out of that. Yeah. So um, to do that and be spontaneous, like those are like probably my favorite hobbies. Like um, I'll go out, like, you know, I, I really like to get dressed, like outfits are my shit. Yeah. You know, so like I'm definitely. Um, you definitely got some grip. Yeah, I about to say, um, been, I've been told I missed to put that shit on. So, yeah, you, um, you definitely, like, if you scroll through your Instagram, you always got a mean fit on. Yeah, you know, so. Um, just well, where'd that, that come from? You always been someone who was dressing nice? Yeah, I just always. Um, like to look good. Yeah, I, I like to look good. I was taller, you know, I was just always something to, to look at. Yeah. So I'm just like, all right, well, shit, if people want to look at me, <laughs> let me let me try to do this right. So in middle school and shit, when did you hit, like, a great, crazy, like, when were you tall, tall? Oh, you want to hear some shit? Like, um. <laughs> I was probably 6'2 in middle school. All my friends were taller. They were like 6'4. Nah, nah. You know what I mean? Like they, they, were, they were like definitely dunking and shit. I couldn't. And um, I stayed 6'2, like kind of through college. I mean, not through college, kind of through um, high, high school. school. Maybe grew like half an inch. I want to say six months after my injury and I stopped playing, I grew four inches. Nah. Crazy. How the hell does that happen? I don't know. I guess God was like, you're, you're going to be fucking doing murals. <laughs> you smacked your head and, and, and something something went, something went shook loose in your brain. Yeah, it's just like, all right, yeah, get That's tall. That's crazy. And it's crazy because if I'd have had that four inches, I definitely would have like yeah. been playing at a different level. It would have been crazy. You ever been able to smash? Oh, easily. I uh, still can. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I still can. I got the bounce. That's what's up. I mean, I was never, I was never good at basketball ever, but I played a good bit. I just, I'm not like a big sports guy. You know, mm-hmm. I played football forever, but I just, like, I don't watch sports. I'm like watching movies and shit like that. What, uh, I mean, are you someone that like listens to music? You got to be listening to music and shit while you're working or are you someone that likes the quiet? Um, I have a weird, uh, weird balance of both. Like I'm, I'm a Libra. So like, you know, I just, I think as I'm getting older, I'm learning that my life has to have x amount of balance you know yeah. what i mean so um i definitely catch myself you know listening to you know music i'll pair the headphones in sometimes like that's too intimate and i'll have to listen to it on stereo yeah sometimes you know raps too much sometimes you know i get into the jazz you know um yeah i fuck with tame impala oh that's my yeah guy. You know what I mean? yeah like um he's definitely a good groove to paint to but um yeah I'm a, I'm a little bit of a balanced person when it comes to that because uh it kind of doesn't matter. I just it just goes with the flow. Like even um when I paint, I'm really kind of I'm really kind of freestyling a lot of shit. Even my um, are you? Yeah, like I'm freestyling I, a lot. I was looking at that Nipsey piece and I was like, I wonder how the fuck he did this. Like like do you? Freestyle. Yeah, like you don't like plan anything really, or do you have like kind of an idea of how shit is? Like, kind of. The only time I'll have a plan is if like a client initially asked me for a sketch. Yeah, which is um. I hate that, but like you know, it's it's good, it's good business. Like I continue to do it, but um, <laughs> I hate it, but it's good business. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's good for business. Necessary so, evil, you know. But um, other than that, like even when I am producing the sketch, like everything's just freestyle. I'm not really thinking. You know, I I think about my client a lot, like yeah. what they're asking for. They're, like how long did that Nipsey piece take? Um, I did the Nipsey in about like a day and a half. Yeah, like it's it's wild to uh, now. Do you fuck shit up ever? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking shit up's like my favorite thing to do. Shit is definitely fucked up. So, know? I mean, like, have you ever been like, uh, you know, like, you know, 60, 70% into a project and it like got fucked up to no repair kind of like what, what's like, what's like something bad that's happened? Um, 
fell no, off a bucket and it yeah, poured paint like, everywhere. Yeah, my fuck ups are definitely like blooper. Like that's why I don't do a lot of time lapse because like <laughs> uh, a lot of times like I I trip over cans, I fall. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I've the ladder tips over and shit. Like the uh, can will squirt me or like you know what I mean? Just all types yeah. of wild ass shit. But um, as far as like the work. Uh, the good thing about me, and um, I think this is what separates me a, a lot from, you know, a lot of different people is um, sports gave me that, like, you know, that that Mamba mentality. Yeah, so, like, you know, once I flight. get to, like, 70%, yeah. like, I'm going to do it. Yeah. Like, there, there's no fucking that up. Yeah. I'm just not going to. I don't, I, don't, I don't see it. Like, I don't, I don't <laughs> see that happening. I don't see it. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, no, nah, I think I'm going to do it. That's dope, though. I mean, it, so, I mean, you're pretty, you're consistently busy. What, uh, you know, for people that have been, like, you know, hitting you up to do these murals, like, I've seen you've been doing a lot of stuff in schools. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, what, like, what are some of the other, like, how do, how do you even get linked up with this? Like, where are people, like... You know, it's crazy, man. It's like just how, like word of mouth. Yeah, it's 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 word of mouth, social media. Like it's like a it's a it's a beautiful tornado of um of marketing. You know that I don't have to work too hard for due to like you know example is like say I do a food truck, another food truck hits me. Like I did one food truck and I've I have three food trucks I didn't even post yet that I yeah. that are completed. You know, like really? it's just like that's how it happens. Or somebody would be like, you know, it's an indoor mural. And then, like, oh, I have an indoor mural or a man cave. And it's like, oh, I have a man cave. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's just like, it just rolls with, um, that's like spider that. webs. Yeah. It's wild. And everybody wants something completely different, you know? So, um, that always helps me out a lot. Yeah. What is, uh, what do you think your most complicated piece was? Like, do you, do you ever have pieces that you're like, it's hard for you to figure out or get the way you want them to be? Um, my recent, Big piece, No Child Left Behind was really complicated. Yeah. Very, very complicated. Um, due to color selection, um, I had a lot of different colors that I normally don't deal with. Yeah. Um, as far as, like, facial features. Um, it's crazy how you're doing that shit as far as, like, you know, the, the contours and everything. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know. It's, it, it's kind of overwhelming whenever you look at some of the pieces because I feel like, you know, obviously you could see it being built in your head a little bit different than I can, mm -hmm. but I feel like it's just like so hard to like visualize where the shit is, but that's obviously why you're a professional. And I'm, I mean, yeah, a, lot, <laughs> a lot of times I'm not really there. Like, um, it's so funny. Like my phone will ring and like people try to talk to me like while I'm muraling and stuff. And like, I, I, it's almost like I don't even speak English. Like yeah. while I'm doing, like I'm just somewhere else and like just doing it. And that's why, uh, that's why it's called. I'll call you right back. It's uh, <laughs> the reason that it is that name is because like usually everyone that I talk to, uh, you know, we're talking about you know the thing that they pour their heart and soul into, whether it's painting, rapping, anything like that. Mm -hmm. At that point in time, you know, at some point in time in their life, they're working so hard and they're so like infatuated with what they're doing. Boys are calling them. And trying to get a hold of them. Mm -hmm. And I always, I'm answering the phone and just, you know, oh, dude, I'll call you right back. It's like, I'm yep. in the middle of making some shit work. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, I feel like, like I said before, you could tell who's doing shit in the city. And you could tell who's like, you know, really grinding and really like, you know, putting in work and mm -hmm. like, you know, really wanting to elevate their craft. And it, it, I mean, I could see a lot of your shit everywhere. I mean, you're always posting stuff. So you're obviously doing crazy amounts of work. Mm -hmm. Are you, I mean, like, do you take days off? Yeah, I definitely take days off. Mental but, health, got to. Yeah, you know, I'll take maybe a week of, I mean, a week of doing nothing at a time, or maybe go two weeks at a time. Um, you know, go hard for two weeks, take a week off. I try to take Sunday off. Yeah. You know, as much as I can. Um, weirdly, Sunday is a great day to start projects. So yeah. um, I try to, you know, even that out as much as I can. But yeah, take breaks. I get good sleep. Um, I hear a lot of people in my peer group or you know just in my um in my age demographic alone it's just like um sleep is like an issue and i'm like well i mean <laughs> crazy you should definitely sleep because if you if you don't like you don't have like right you, that's your foundation yeah like you know i'm, I'm doing like freaking nature size projects and it's like yeah i sleep eight hours a day you know what i mean like at least Bro, i've always been someone who is i've always never been afraid to say no as far as people going to bar or shit mm -hmm. like that i never drank so it's just like i never been out mm -hmm. you know what i mean I, I like to be home right and uh you know sleep 
I'm the same way. It's like, I don't understand how people, you know, you're out of your mind. Go to a bar, get all fucked up, and then got to be, if you have to be up at, at 6 a.m., right? why are you doing it to yourself? Yeah, like simple things. I mean, I don't even set my myself up to be up at yeah, 6 a.m. I know. You know. Like, it's like, it's like, <laughs> I, don't you, even, I don't even put myself in that position. It's, it's just like, there's so many different things that like, I, I don't know, you know, like, it's just like. Um, well, that's what happens whenever you become a self-made man is like, you get to make your own schedule mm-hmm. and do things like that. And. And uh, it's great to see. I mean, like it's it, it's motivational. Like everyone that I have on here, it's like, you know, this is almost like a cheat sheet for me as mm-hmm. far as like how these people are making, you know, shit happen. Mm-hmm. You know, yesterday I fucking talked to Santa Claus. I talked to this God, dude. Uh, I swear to God, it was wild as hell. Uh, just a two hour conversation with this dude that has been Santa for like 36, or 36 years. A professional Santa. Gangster as hell. <laughs> but it's like. I don't know, dude. I just always want to be like, uh, you know, I just want to talk to everyone. I'm just curious Mm -hmm. about people, but I hear about all these people, whether it's someone who's a professional Santa or someone who's a professional muralist, it's like, you know, I'm going to take some knowledge that I got from you, some game that you're all spitting to me and I'm just incorporating it to my life a little bit Mm -hmm. more. And uh, it, like I said, it's a, it's a cheat sheet. This is selfish for me. This podcast. I mean, it's a good cheat sheet. You know, I, I think, um, I think the questions asked and like, you know, like I think it's just important for people to hear, you know, some of the aspects and, um, you know, get this side of the energy of progression instead of just like, you know, do it yourself videos on YouTube. For sure. You know, so people always like I, you know, I I love the people that I love, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like if I have a, if I'm a fan of people, like I, I love them and I always want to see, like, I don't want to watch a fucking interview on Ellen DeGeneres where, you know, they're just promoting whatever they're promoting, whatever movie or anything like that. And they're just answering the same dumbass like questions. Mm-hmm. Like that's why I enjoy like long form podcasts. That's why I've always wanted to make mine like a little bit more long form is because like, I really want to like learn about people and like why mm-hmm. they make the decisions and like, you know, hear about like, you know, you falling off of a ladder and shit like that, because I feel like that's what like really like makes people, uh, it's intimate. It's mm-hmm. way more intimate. It's super relatable. You know, like I think um, that's what it is. It's relatable that, you know, that is a key factor in my career. You know, I'm just a, l- a relatable person You yeah. know, as much as I'm six, six, you know, I dress like this, you know, it's <laughs> just like, well, shit. I mean, the dude's like, Normal and cool as fuck. Yeah, yeah. normal and so cool as like, fuck. You know what I mean? So, you That's know, like, uh, it, it helps. You it, know, it's incredible how many uh, you know normal and cool as fuck people are in the city, and mm-hmm. like it's 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 uh, it's cool to be able to like have a uh, platform to be able to try to you know shine some light on some people that are doing some other shit you know Mm -hmm. i mean like that's why i want to keep this as diverse as possible because it's like you know beekeepers funeral directors comedians you know every time someone random listen or anytime i have someone random on you know they bring a whole different group of people that are listening and it's Mm -hmm. like people are able to like spider web off and learn about different people and it's dope to be able to uh kind of get involved with that and kind of be a platform to kind of elevate it what uh what are some of your goals you know as far as what you're doing i know you're you know you're grinding you're grinding hard but it's Mm -hmm. like what are your goals um i think my biggest goal right now is just to um make what I do as accessible as possible for, you know, black people and people of color, you know, at the city and, um, you know, make it realistic. You know, I think, I think the process that I took to do this, I had to change a lot of norms. Mm -hmm. And, um, I don't think that was necessarily fair to the people that, you know, are coming up maybe behind me with me. However, you know, I, I just think that, um, I think everybody deserves a fair shot. You know what I mean? I don't think it should be one person at a time being filtered through or... For sure. You know, however people in the city want to work things. But, um, yeah, my biggest goal is to just make this, like, an accessible thing, you know, and, like, it, it, it be a thing. You know, I won't I won't stop until, you know, the person that looks up to me the most or, you know, if, if it's competition, however they view my work, like, you know, I want them to, you know, have a fruitful career, just as a fruitful career as I have. Yeah. So um, I think that's that's one. And then um, teaching this to kids, because um, they're, like, taking the arts out of the schools, and, like, it's, it's driving me up a Is wall. Is that happening? Yeah, they're definitely doing it. Like, they try to, like, filter it back in or whatever, but, like, you know, things change, you know, and, and, and you know, I think 
I they're going to be having us learning some dumb ass shit, but yeah. they'll take out. <laughs> I'm like, I, I was sick of tempera paint and acrylics and, and color theory and shit when I was in like 10th grade. That's why I didn't go to art class. Yeah, you know 100%. I mean? like, a lot of people wouldn't even like, I'm like, yo, I hated art class. Like, yeah, because you know it mean? wasn't like, fun. It sucked. Yeah, it, it sucked. It, they make you, oh, we're going to draw this still life. It's like, just just give me the opportunity to do a project I want to do and grade that. Yeah, just let me fuck it up yeah. you know what I mean like, exactly because I mean that might just be the, one of the greatest things you've ever seen for sure you know? so I remember one time I had a uh, I had an abstract painting I had to do and I was so, I, I never really I'm never good at art you know I never was good but I took it all the time and I had this abstract painting and my art teacher was like you know you could do whatever you want so I made a beach I made a beach ball that was dripping into a Rubik's cube and like a water bottle that was pouring the ocean. And I was like, this is fucking, this is fire. Yeah, I'm like, that's like, sweet. Yeah, I was like, this is crazy. I turned it in and this bitch gave me a C. And I was like, I, I was so offended. I was like, how could you even grade this? Right. Like, how could you grade this? Yeah. Oh, I didn't think you put in enough effort. It's like, so I did it. You're I out think. of your fucking mind. You know, I always hated that. I thought it was insane. It's messed up, man. Cause a lot of that comes from like, you know, the shitty, the shitty shit artists have to go through in art school and then they become teachers. And like, you know, it's, I've it's never a had long, like, like a long, shit rolls down a hill type of thing. I've never had more negative things said about any sort of, uh, you know, scholastic environment than the art Institute. Yep. You know what I mean? Did, did you ever have any dreams to go there? No, it's so funny. I, um, I went to Shinley and, um, my art teacher at the time, Miss Price, a wonderful individual. She was like trying to get me to go into the governor's school, which is like a super like artsy. What is that? Is that I, here? I think it's like a little out. It's like a boarding school. Oh, I never heard of that. It, it's like super like, you know, you kind of got to get like yeah. invite only. But um, no, I never like, I don't know. I just knew. I'm like, I don't want to go to school. I don't like going to class. So yeah. I'm just like, I don't <laughs> want you to tell me. Or like, I don't want what I kind of like to do on the side. Were you in trouble like, in high school? Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't bit, know. I, I don't know if it, if trouble was the word. I definitely um it was a little spicy. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I like, like yeah, that. Was a little spicy. I was a little spicy. <laughs> you know, I was always like kind of. Um, it's wild to think that that people were put in a cage like that. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And like you know, a mental cage. It's like you're you're just like serving time in this fucking classroom. Yeah, you're it just sucked. Like, God, I just want to go out and read a comic book or something. Yeah, or I just, <laughs> I, yeah, I want to do what I want to do. Like like I would like teach me how to be the best me. Did you? you know I, mean? I mean, did your experience in high school ever like kind of steer you away from wanting to go to college? Um, kind of not. You know, just because like. You know, being a black kid from Homewood, like, that's, like, kind of your way out, yeah. you know? So, like, I had to do whatever I could do to try to at least, you know, have a shot at that or see it or, you know, see what's going on. So, like, hoops was kind of, like, the main focus. So, um, yeah, I don't know. And then all my all my friends, we were, like, we are always, like, kind of smart as shit. Like, you know, we just didn't really care. <laughs> like, yeah, you needed uh, – it, it's, like, it's not that – you're not smart. It's just you didn't apply yourself to shit you didn't want to. Yeah, we're like learn, we don't want to. We don't want to be here. Like you know what I mean. Like it's like I remember sitting in history class and shit and just thinking it's like I don't give a fuck about any of this and I don't know shit about. I like it's like I didn't retain anything. Mm-hmm. Half the shit they were teaching us wasn't accurate anyway. But it's like it. it I don't know. I, I think about it now and it's like, I don't, I never cared enough to pay attention to any of it. But mm-hmm. now it's like, I'm so inquisitive about anything. Yep. You know what I mean? It don't matter what it is. Mm-hmm. I'll be grilling people all the time. 20 questions. Yep. And it's like, I don't know. I just like, uh, I just think people are fascinating really. Yeah. I mean, it definitely is. School only brought me, um, I definitely had a couple of great teachers that, um, you know, just stuck with me. I talked to them to this day. Yeah. That's um, dope. That was just, you know, it was just cool. You know, Shenley was a great place to um, cultivate, you know, great teachers. Did so, you go back there? And did, is that one of the places you did a mural in? Um, no, they ended up closing it. So um, they closed Shinley like the year after I graduated. Now it's like apartments and stuff. They have a mural in the gym already. I don't know. I don't know who did that. But, um, you know, I'm just trying to like make my way back into Obama. I did Westinghouse due to, you know, me being from Homewood. Yeah. And that would be like my feeder school. But, um you know, like I definitely wanted to do something with Shinley, you know, for sure. How do you get linked up with Billy Porter? Um, so a crazy thing about that, um, I was painting him and Cause where's he from? He's from he's actually from Lincoln. He's okay. um he's from around the way. But he was here um working on his his film and one of his 
director is DJ, DJ Cunningham, great dude. Um, he walked the river walk, you know, I guess every morning. And um, one day he stopped me and said something and got my information. And um, This is while you were doing your mural. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, it was very brief. Like, he didn't ask me for anything, you know, specific at all. I think he just asked me for my email. And then um, the next day, Billy Porter's, like, just floating there by himself. Like oh, he coffee. just rolled yeah, up. He just showed up. Like, you know, <laughs> showed Jesus. up. Like, you know what I mean? Just, like, super chill clothes. Like That's crazy. You know, he had this, like, wild Ugg outfit you it was great you know what i mean like yeah. a super chill sunglasses. always had the wildest drip yeah it was it, and he just you know he was there and he's just looking at it he's embracing it and um you know he's talking to us and he you know he tells it he tells me he's like um you know i'm i'm working with cbs right now we're doing um part of my special at kappa and um i want to bring them down here you know and i want them to show the mural and this and wow. so like he like summoned the whole thing down there and um, man, that's dope. And like he said it, he was like, "Yeah, this is the time." And it was that day, you know. It was probably like ten, ten thirty when um, when he came down there, and by like twelve thirty, he's like in the most extravagant outfit, you know, and like oh yeah, super tall shoes, like yellow gator down, and um, yeah, he's flowing. It's him, like basically floating, and then like just a bunch of. <laughs> You know, yeah, people with the different entourage. jobs, yeah, like yeah. The cameras and shit. And I'm just like, oh my goodness, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, they just, you know, they had it rolling, they did one cut, and they just did it right there, you know. Wow. And so, um, I thought it was pretty cool. I thought the energy was really, um, really genuine and divine, and I, I felt that's why um, everything was just so one take and um, and like how it just looked and felt like that, you know, like it, yeah, they just. Bang, bang. And, you know, it just was everything was in the moment. We didn't really talk about it. So even Billy didn't really get to embrace the piece until, you know, that CBS showing. So he's like, you know, super emotional at the time. So, you know, yeah. it's just a beautiful thing. Yeah, that's that was uh, that's pretty intense. I remember whenever you posted that, I was like, that's crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. He literally just showed up. Like, yeah, like oh. popped up. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> I know. I'd be nervous. <laughs> Like, oh my god you see, like, he's such a he's just such a uh, um i get a it. wonderful being you know like it, it's even hard to but be. still i'm a big energy person mm-hmm. you know what i mean so it's like i could tell you know that's an energy that like you're gonna feel not even uneasy but you're gonna feel like mm-hmm. you know on point like you gotta feel on guard yeah. uh, not on guard but just on point you know you're alert he is he, the most charismatic being i've ever seen in my life i and bet that, he and is. that like throws you off I you bet. Know, you're like holy shit <laughs> That's a dope experience, though. I mean, that's pretty wild. Is there uh, so like what are a couple places that you would uh, that are like your your goals to you know that you would love to work with? Um, work I definitely, um, I definitely want to do some overseas work. I want to have some stuff like in Brazil, you know, Germany, uh, the UK, London. You know, those are uh, very prestige. Um, international street art places. Yeah, for sure. So, um, definitely want to have some work out there. I actually, um, I've been like uh, hinting to a lot of people because uh, uh, it's just been coming to me. But I actually want to, I think I'm going to dip back in fashion um, sooner than later. There you go. Yeah, Why so not, like, right? I'm, yeah, you know, I, I, I got some time. You know, I, I still have like the energy in me. So, um, you know, and I I, I just think fashion and um, just style and expression right now is yeah. at its peak. You For know? sure. Like, I, I just, I just want to be a part of it and I'm just loving what everybody's doing. So um, I think I'm going to, you know... Do a couple collabs with some local brands, you know what I mean? Local brands that I like. Um, like right now, I got on um, a Junkyard hat. Shout out to Ron Carr. Um, what is Junkyard? Uh, it's his brand, you know what I mean? He does it. He's been doing it for years. You know, he's been cultivating, pushing just the the brand. Uh, it's super creative, you know what I mean? It's just Where like it's all of? meaning. He's out of, he's technically out of Pittsburgh, but he's been pushing out of Atlanta too. Okay. And then um, you dig is um, I know who you dig is yeah I about to say that's the homie you know what I mean so um, he's been making it he's been making it happen for yeah, a while he's now. been snapping so um, you know I just I just like local local things like I love progression I love um, you know growth and success so uh, yeah anybody that's you know on those paths or realms you know I'm completely down to collab work or you know drop something hell yeah um, wow. I feel like you're a very interesting individual. You know, this is a uh, good I've conversation <laughs> for sure. Um, I mean, if if it's all right with you, I think I think we covered a good bit of shit. I, I think that uh, I'd like to move into the ending segment. Uh, the ending segment that I do with all the guests on the podcast is an ending segment called Desert Island Questions. Okay. 
so desert island questions whenever i give each guest three categories to take with them on a desert island to exhaust until you know they starve to death and die basically but uh you know I do the Desert Island questions because we obviously had, you know, a good conversation about you, what you do, how you got into what you do, but we mainly focused on what you do. Mm -hmm. Desert Island questions fills in, uh, adds a little uh, spice to, you know, who you are as a person. So Mm -hmm. first category on Desert Island questions in this situation, you know, Tom Hanks castaway type shit. You get a little TV with an integrated DVD player. You get three DVDs to bring with you to watch over and over and over again. What are they? Uh, Space Jam. That's a good one. Step Brothers and Inception. Mm. Inception. I probably haven't watched it since it came out. I got to I got to revisit that. That Inception and Interstellar. Fucked me up. Like I once I start doing art and like. You know, getting a little artsy, you know, getting a little weird. Yeah. And um watch Inception during a during a, a weird time. <laughs> and um I was like, yo. <laughs> getting a little shit. weird watching Inception. <laughs> you know, like I it just um it definitely came down to me like, you know, always be yourself, always hold your totem down. You yeah. know what I mean? And I was like, whoa. Yeah, some it's some deep shit. It was for super sure. deep. And like it was needed. So um yeah, I think those three movies would keep me grounded for sure. Those are good choices. Uh second category, I usually ask people uh three books, but I want to switch it up and I wanna ask you uh you know, I'd like you to pick three of your favorite sneakers of all time. Mm. You can get as selective as you want as far as colorways, or you could just get, you know, style or silhouette. Um I would definitely need a chunky, chunky donkey. Um, I don't know, just because like I really, I've seen them in person, but I haven't really seen anybody have them. I would probably have some. Um, and Ben and Jerry's M- dunks. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. I never seen them in person. They're crazy. I bet they are. They're crazy. They're they're nasty. The value's crazy on them too. What are they at? Like two K? Oh, I think they range from two to four. Yeah, depending I, on the boxing or packaging, whatever. Yeah. So like definitely them. Um, Man, that's crazy. Out of, out of all of them, you pick them first for sure. All right, for sure, I would pick them just because. Um, I like the cow shoe. print. Yeah, I ch- I like chase those shoes. Yeah. You know, so it was something that like I would be like, all right, if I had to die on this damn island, I know, I right? Got these with me, you know <laughs> what I mean? So um, I'm trying to think of other two. This is a tough one. It is a tough one. Um, I usually would never ask people this, but I've been getting into it crazy. I think I would probably take a pair of, um, I'll probably take a, the M&M 4s. M&M 4s? Yep. M&M dropped a, a pair of um, 4s way back when. Uh, I, was, I can't even tell you when he actually came through, but super limited, super friends and family. He actually did a- um, M&M 4s. He did a pair recently, I want to say over the past like Five to seven years that were black, but the, the ones Carhartt are, ones. Um, oh, those are the black ones. The chrome ones. Are you talking about the blue ones? The M&Ms? yeah, the blue ones. Yep. Oh my goodness, yeah. I've never seen them. Yeah, they're nasty. You know, like blue is just like a color that. Represents and then he did a uh, M M&M and M and Carhartt collab. Those are kind of hard. The black ones. Are yeah, hard the too. black yep. ones are hard. I like a I like a clean silhouette like that. I think he has um Jason Voorhees on the back of them. Oh yeah, he did because that yeah. was one of his things for mm-hmm. sure. They they were like. <laughs> Like that, but um, the blue ones for sure, the chromes. Um, my last one, hmm, I think I would do. You know, I would probably. You know, we're on a desert island, and um, yeah, I would just probably be smart about it and and hold down some Birkenstocks. There you go. You some know? Birkenstocks. That's a good question. <laughs> yeah, you know. I mean, that's a good pick. What? Uh, so, I mean, I'm curious to know what is uh, what's your favorite pair of shoes that you own? Because, like, like I said, I'm I'm kind of new into the sneakerhead shit, and I uh, I don't know. I just I feel like that I would have never expected me to like fours. I love fours mm-hmm. now, um, but I don't know. I I just been diving into it a little bit. It's crazy. Um, it's a hard thing to to start to love because yeah. you're just like, fuck, those are 200 bucks real quick. Yeah, and then next thing you know, you're like, oh, it's worth every penny. I know. That's the, the Dusty worst. Olives, I was like, you know, I've been working hard. Mm-hmm. I was like, I, I've been working hard. And I've been looking at them forever. I've been just staring. Them and the ceramics. Mm-hmm. I'm like, God. Might, might as well, I'll buy them. And then as soon as I bought them the next day, they had a restock on the Nike app. Oh, no. Not on sneakers, but they had a restock of the Dusty Olives. And I, they had a restock, I think, of 12 different dunks. I wow. entered every single one of them. Women's sizes, too. 
Every single one of them didn't hit not one. Lost them all. It, it, it's ridiculous. It, it's crazy. It's ridiculous. Did you see all the shit with the, you know, how um, uh, the one dude who bought like, I think he bought like 35% of the Travis Scott's, them oh, blue ones that came no. out. There was like a big article that were like, you thought you had a good chance at getting these on the app. And it's just like some dude with a fucking- He robbed everybody. I know, it's crazy. Oh my goodness. What a wild world, the sneaker world. Especially, Accessibility and money, man, gets you far. Yeah, it is. It's Crazy. wild. Um, all right, third category. I'm curious about this. You get to pick three CDs and mm-hmm. a and a and a skip and a skip uh, disc or a, a non skip Walkman. Hmm. What did I have? Um, I definitely. I can't even put a a, a thumb on which DMX CD I would have. But I'll I have, give you all of them. I'm about to say I definitely have like a a nice mix between you know DMX's career, like maybe like his his top 15 hits that has to play. Yeah, you know, get me hype. You know, oh maybe run God. around that, <laughs> run around that down oh, or something. And you're just like, oh, yeah, you're like, let's go. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm with it. Like, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to bark. I'm trying to, you know, what I mean, I'm trying to do a little bit of everything. <sighs> Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Crazy. Oh geez, man, gone too soon. Um, my other two. Uh, surprisingly, I would take Kanye graduation with me. Mm. I would definitely take that. There's a um, couple yeah. couple tracks on there that still to this day get me through. Um, family business, yeah, family business. Bro, that's my um, favorite. Family business. How could you? That's one of the best songs of all time. Snapping, you know. What I, I mean? know. Like, he graduation is just like how you get over the hump. Yeah, you know. So I think I would have that as well. And then um, I'm trying to think. Of what smooth CD I would want. Mm, gotta have the you gotta have a balance of it all. Cause I think I would want some Tame Impala. Uh-uh, it can't be tame. It's gotta <laughs> it's gotta be some Lauren Hill. Oh, okay. It's definitely gotta be a, a mm. Lauren Hill. And um I just need those like clean vibes, you know, so I could just look at the water, see the, so the firm. You know what I mean? See the um See the, I don't know what type of trees are going to be around, but just watch yeah. the breeze around. So I mm. think some type of Lauryn Hill CD. Probably I would just have to do greatest hits at a, of DMX and Lauryn Hill. Yeah, I feel like the greatest hits CDs are the best for any, mm-hmm. for the anything. I would have to, because like I would need all of those jams. Yeah, for sure. I will allow that. That's, that's, that works. Um, okay. Uh, third to last question is uh, the Death Row Meal. Mm. So the death row meal is uh, you ever read them articles of people getting put to death? You get their la- they get to pick whatever they want their last meal. You mm-hmm. get to pick an appetizer, a main course, and a dessert mm-hmm. and a beverage. Uh, appetizer. All right, before I die, shit. Let me. I know, ain't this. it crazy? All right, appetizer. I'm a, I'm gonna be a basic motherfucker and get um, mozzarella sticks from my app. I swear people pick it all the time because yeah. it's fire. It's That's a go-to. something I definitely want to eat before I die. It's a go-to. Yeah. I'm like, if I'm going to die, like, and I had mm-hmm. a mozzarella stick, cool. You know yeah. I mean? A hundred percent. Honestly, I'll pick them even over, you know, if you go to like a high-end place and they'll usually like deep fry like a block of cheese. Yeah. And the triangles and shit. Yeah. And you're just like, That's, it's like, it's like. I, I'm even fine with just a frozen mozzarella right. sticks. Just, just give me the just yeah. give me the one that come in the frozen. You yeah, know what I mean? the I'm package. fine with them. <laughs> it's, it's always perfect a go-to. balance of crunchy and cheese. I don't need a whole log of it. Like, yeah, you get like six of them. You're like, cool. Yeah, you that's know? it. That's a good one. So um, mozzarella sticks. Uh, my main course, I would definitely need some wild ass like seafood platter, like king mm. crab legs, salmon. Oh yeah. Uh, oysters, you know. You, you eat raw oysters? Yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. I will say, yeah, sign me up. Mussels, like some sort of grand. Have you ever like been that. to the Penn Avenue Fish Company? Not yet. I heard about them. I heard they're great. So I, I I, never knew about these until this weekend. Me and my uh, wife and my mom were walking down the strip, and we were, I was like, why don't we go to like, you know, Luke Woolley's restaurant or whatever and just go have something nice. Two hour wait up in that bitch. And then while we were walking mm-hmm. there, I accidentally walked into the Penn Avenue Fish on Penn Avenue. Yeah, on Penn Avenue. And uh, I was like, this, this don't look like Woolies. And they were like, this ain't it. So after we found out it was a two hour, we went back to this place. It was so good. It was fire. It's probably super fresh. It is. It's super fresh. And it was so quick. I, boys were waiting two hours to get mm. into Luke Woolies. We literally order. You sit down. They bring it out to you. Swear in like five minutes. But You're up out of it. Place that's is fire. So, that's what's up. I'm going to have to go check it out. Yeah, I that's a good place to go. For sure. And then um, what's the last? Dessert? Yeah. Hmm. 
Yo, man, I, I, one thing about me, like, if you ever want to bait me into anything, a chocolate chip cookie will get me. Oh, yeah. And then um, throw a little vanilla vanilla bean ice cream on the side. But, yeah, I agree with that. You know, I'm with that. Oh, yeah, that's a good choice. All right. Um, so uh, this this is the next question is probably the most telling question. Uh, if you're getting ready to go on a road trip, you go into a gas station, you get to pick one snack, what would it be? Oh, shit. Um, I'm like a pastry person, man. It's got to be like some sort of like. Oh, wow. Like a little Debbie type like a shit. Debbie or some shit. What's like, your pick? Um, oh, man. Either like the cupcakes. Uh, oh, wow. Like the zingers. I, I ain't never with, been to either of them. Like I fuck with those. My, go, my go to is the ding dongs. I fucked with those, and then ho hos were fire. Mm-hmm. Ho-hos but then were fire. Uh, you know what slept on is um the the apple pie type things. Yep. Fire those and coffee cakes. Yeah, I was about to say I almost forgot about coffee cakes. Hundred percent, like super slept. Give on. you one of all them things. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, and then the last question that I ask anyone is. Uh, if you could have a conversation with anyone alive or dead, who would it be and why? And before you have an answer, I feel like it's an obvious question for a loved one, but if you could pick someone who is not a loved one. Mm-hmm. I would talk to, I would bring Andy Warhol out here. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. That's and a I, good answer. And I would bring Andy Warhol out here because he was snobby and I would just go at it with him. Yeah. I would, it would be a back and forth or just like, you know, just, a bunch of information, you know, but shade, snobby, you yeah, know, I, condescending. I, I, I think it would just be great. You know, I think it would be like, you know, one, it'd be iconic, but two, it just, you know, I think it would sharpen the last things that like I would need in my head. Yeah, you know for I mean? sure. Like anywhere I went to Shenley as well. So, um, Oh wow. I would just, um, you know, like to me like that, I, I think that's who I would talk to, you know, like I would, I would, I would ask him, is it okay to, um, Take his baton. Yeah. <laughs> I would ask them. That's a good answer. Andy Andy Warhol is a good answer. What an interesting mm-hmm. person. Um, Cam, I'm pumped about this. I appreciate you coming I over. I appreciate you, man. I had, a lot of time. I had a lot of fun, man. This was sweet. Hell yeah. I'm glad that you had a good time. I always like bringing people over and talking to them. I really knew nothing about you before this. I try to like, you know... Obviously, we've been talking back and forth and shit like that. We like mm-hmm. each other's shit, and I see your work. You see the shit that I'm doing, but uh, it's nice to be able to hear about you and hear your story and uh, kind of hear what makes you work. Yeah, man. It's, it's always good to tell it. You know, I think a lot of times with the art, you don't get to really have, like, you know, a, a recorded conversation or a conversation somebody could listen to or keep. You know, it's always pictures, you know. Well, yeah. So um, it's always a beautiful thing to do it. And, like, you know, definitely always good to have great questions, you know, great hosts. So, Definitely appreciate you, my good brother. I appreciate you as well. Uh, tell everyone where they can follow your work. Um, you can follow me on um, Facebook, Camo Nesbit. Um, Instagram is Camo Customs, one word, with a Z at the end. I'm working on my website. My website is Camo Customs, with a Z at the end, dot com. Uh, you could definitely Google Cameron Camo Nesbit. Um, a bunch of stuff pops up. And I got a couple things working out and um, in the works where uh, more publications and things will come out for um, some newer things that are going on but everyone listening i appreciate it as usual uh each and every week another great guest coming up uh thanks for listening call you right back